Hello everyone. In this tutorial, we will learn how to model the heat dissipation from a hot electronics component fitted to a printed circuit board. Heat is dissipated via a thin heat sink. Now open the Fluent Launcher from Start menu and then make sure you select the meshing mode and then tick double precision and type for meshing processes as well as for solver processes and click start. From the workflow menu, select the workflow type and select water tight geometry. Now, the first step is to import the geometry. Use millimeter for units and then import the geometry file. After we imported the geometry, we can select this bar and click on this icon to change the transparency. Now we need to add local sizing. Click yes. After that, select size control type proximity and then the cells bear gap is one and scope to faces. Then select the wall heat sink and wall heat source and click add local sizing. The next step is to generate the surface mesh, reduce the maximum size to 20 millimeter and then click generate the surface mesh. As you can see the maximum skewness is 0.53 which is good. Now the next step is to describe the geometry. The geometry consists of only solid regions and yes will you cap openings and extract fluid regions and there will be no fluid fluid boundary types so the setting will have no effect in this model so keep the other settings as default and click describe geometry the next step is to enclose fluid regions select inlet 1 and select the zone type to pressure inlet and click create cap then select outlet and select the zoom type to be pressure outlet and click create cap. As you can see we enclosed the fluid regions by marking the inlet and outlet surfaces. The next step is to create region. The estimated number of fluid regions is 1 so click create regions. Then we need to update regions. The solid housing will be dead region. And we have here the solid heat source, the solid heat sink, and the solid board are solid. And then the fluid region is fluid. Click update regions. As you can see, we have here the domain is ready for simulation. The next step is to add boundary layers. Keep the settings as default and click add boundary layers. Then go to generate the volume mesh. Select polyhexacore as fill with. And then click generate the volume mesh as you can see the minimum orthogonal equality is 0.17 which is acceptable now we can go to the next step and switch to solution but before that let us save the mesh file Go to File menu and select Write Mesh and select the Legacy Compressed Mesh Files and name it Heatsink and click OK. Now let us click Switch to Solution. The first step is to go to Units and change the temperature unit from Kelvin to Celsius. And then click Close. Then select the Solver Type and the physics settings so we have here the time is steady the solver type is pressure based now from physics tab tick energy in this uh, problem the flow is laminar so change the viscous settings to laminar flow and click ok then we need to enable the radiation so double click on radiation and select surface to surface model then click on settings for a small and simple geometry such as this the settings are good 
So in this case, click OK, and then click Compute, Write, Read, and then click OK. While Fluent computes the view factors, progress is reported in the console window, as you can see here. As you can see here, view factors have been read successfully. Now click OK to close the radiation model panel. Then we need to define the material. So close the model tab, click double click on materials, change the density setting from constant to incompressible, ideal gas and click change create and then close in most natural convection problems the change of density with temperature drives the flow the changes in pressure over the domain are minimal and their effect on density negligible hence the incompressible ideal gas density formulation can be used instead of the fully compressible ideal gas model now let us define the solid material Double click on aluminium and select go to Fluent Database and change the material type to solid and select cover and click copy, close, change, create, close. Now we need to add a new solid material, so modify the cover material to produce the BCB material. The BCB material is FR4 and then delete the chemical formula change the density to 1250 and the CB to 1300 and the thermal conductivity 0.35 and click change create now change create mixture and overwrite cover select no and then click close so we have here three materials aluminium cover and fr4 for the bcb then we need to add a new material so double click on cover rename the material to component and delete the chemical formula and then Type the density 1900, the CB 795, and the thermal conductivity 10, and then click change create, change create mixture and overwrite cover, click no, and then click close. So we have here the four materials. Now let us define the cell zone conditions. We have here the solid board, the solid heat sink, and the solid heat source. Double click on the solid board and change the material to FR4 and click apply close. Similarly, the heat sink is made of cover, so double click on heat sink and change aluminium to cover and click apply close. Double click on solid heat source and select the material to component and tick source terms and then define the number of energy sources, which is one. And then select constant. And we need to set the thermal power 75 Watt, which is dissipated by this component. The component volume is 0.118 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus three. So the volumetric source is 635,000 watt per cubic meter. And click OK. And then click Apply. Close. Now we need to define the operating conditions. So check a graffiti and then define the Y as minus 9.81 and then tick variable density parameters and select specified operating density and select it 1.11 for most natural convection problems with the pressure boundaries it is recommended to set operating density to a value corresponding to the ambient temperature and the pressure outside the domain here that is one bar and 318 kelvin click ok to close the operating condition 
Now let us move and define boundary conditions. Double click on boundary conditions and double click on pressure inlet. From thermal, change the total temperature to 45 and click apply and then close. Double click on pressure outlet and define the backflow total temperature 45 Celsius. Apply, close. Now let us define radiation boundary conditions at walls. Double click on solid housing and enter a value of 0.9 for internal emissivity. And then click apply, close. Similarly, set internal emissivity for the following walls. Wall heat source, internal emissivity 0.3. Apply, close. Wall board 0.9. Apply. Close and then wall heat sink 0.9. Apply now. Go to solution tab and click on definitions in new and then volume report and select volume average. Rename it component temperature and then select the solid heat source and the field variable is temperature and tick print to console and then click OK. Double click on methods and then make sure the scheme is coupled and the pressure is body force weighted. Now double click on initialization and select hybrid initialization and click initialize. Now double click on run calculation under fluid time scale change the time step method to user specified and change the time step size to 3 seconds and also under solid time scale change the time step method to user specified and change the time step size to 2000 seconds set the number of iteration to 150 and click calculate now as you can see residuals have reached convergence criteria but values in the report plot are not constant so we need to perform more iterations under monitors double click on residual and change the energy criterion to 1e for the power of minus 9 and click ok and perform more iterations click calculate Now the solution is converged and the values in the report plot are constant. Now from results tab, double click on fluxes and select the total heat transfer rate. Select all the surfaces and click compute. As you can see here, the total heat generation rate is 75 watt, which close to what we defined in the energy source so the net imbalance is 0.49 watt which is less than one percent so we can say it is okay and then click close now let us check the final temperature go to solution and from definition click edit and click on the component temperature and click compute and you can see here the final temperature is 93.8 celsius and then click close to calculate the maximum component temperature from results tab click on volume integrals and select maximum and the field variable will be temperature and select the solid heat source and then click compute you will see the maximum temperature is 94.6 and then click close now let us add iso surface for flow visualization from results tab 
go to surface and create ISO surface. Select the surface of constant mesh x coordinate and then rename it x equal zero and then click create and then close. Now go to graphics from vector select new and then select vectors of velocity velocity magnitude and then select the style to be arrow and the scale 5 select the surface x equal 0 and click save display click on draw mesh click display close save display as you can see Vectors show the formation and development of a wall bloom above the heated component. Now let us define contour plot. Select contours of temperature and static temperature and select the walls and then click save display. And as you can see here the static temperature on the heat sink and the PCB. Now actually we can combine the contour and vector on a single plot. Go to scene, double click on scene and select the vector and contour and click save display. As you can see we combine the static temperature contour with the velocity magnitude vector on a single window. And here we have finished our tutorial. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Goodbye.